Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I have an opportunity to work on an early uh, Penn International. This is the Penn International 12 LT, it's the International 2. These reels, I think, are 1980s, if I remember. The original Internationals came out in 1967, I think, uh, Edition 2, which pretty much had the same f features and functions, came a little bit later. Well. Uh, this reel's in for a basic service. It's working. If you go in the free spool, it spins nicely. First uh, hit, second hit. It's been used, and now uh, it's ready for a tune-up. Now, if you can work on this reel, you can work on pretty much each edition of the single-speed uh, international reels, uh, first and second edition, right up to 30s, the 50s, and so on. They're bigger sizes, but the actual structure of the reel for the most part is the same. There's a little bit of a difference on this one. You have a click button on the back side. On the originals you have a, uh, a swing arm over here that is your click ratchet. So we're going to take this reel apart. We're going to show you how to service it and uh, show you how to get this reel back out there fishing again. And uh, well if you like these kinds of videos, if you want to see uh, how to service reels, if you want to learn a little bit more about how those reels are made, and a little bit about the histories behind them, well then I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting a video. And well, you can see if that's a video you want to watch uh, or not. This one is a, a large uh, ocean trolling reel. Uh, the next one might be a small uh, bass low profile reel. You never know, you're uh, watching the service what comes into my shop and I get all kinds of uh, reels in for repair. So it's kind of up to what the uh, the folks are sending in as to what I'll be working on that day or week or whenever. All right, we took off the tie down screw and the handle screw. This has got a little bit of uh, old tarnish on it. That makes sense. The reel's been out on the water. It's been fishing. Uh, you should hose down your, your reels after each use, particularly if you're in a salt water environment. Uh, you use fresh water, that'll clean it up for you. And uh, well, we're going to take the time to use chrome polish and a, and a um, 40000 ultra fine uh, steel wool. That'll clean that chrome right up. And then I take my pieces and parts off, they go into a parts tray. I use the parts tray to keep track of the parts that uh, have come off the reel, and when I go to reassemble, the parts that go back on the reel. I also wear a protective glove, that's to keep most of the stuff that I can off of my hand. There's a lot of old greases and who knows what in, inside a lot of these reels. And I would prefer to uh, well, avoid getting them in skin contact if I don't know what it is that I'm working on. Well, we've got three screws now that hold down this preset adjuster and the arm underneath. When I work on these reels, I like to put that free spool adjuster or the lever into the free spool position. Now, I don't know who worked on this reel last time, but these screws are really tight. Take your time with them, and you will uh, not damage the, the pieces and parts. We've got three screws. They're all the same size, so I'm going to put those into my parts tray. And now this piece will lift out, and this piece includes that uh, free spool adjuster. Well, underneath here there is a, a little clip. Not sure we're going to be able to get this one out. So we'll wipe it clean. And this clip, sometimes it'll you can pop it out, sometimes you can't. There's a little ridge it sits in. Now, I'm just going to flood that with penetrating oil. There's no issue here with that preset knob. So I'll just flood it and I'll mop it clean. And if you spin that little clip, you will get, get it cleaned underneath. So that's your free spool adjuster on that side. On the outside, we have that same little film that's developed there from uh, exposure to the salt air and the like. I'll take care of that. And again, I'm just using an automotive chrome polish. This one happens to be Turtle Wax's chrome cleaner. 
which is kind of interesting because there doesn't seem to be a lot of chrome on cars anymore. And uh, that cleans it up nicely. That'll go into my parts tray and it'll go near where those three screws are that I took out. This is your three spool or lever for the lever drag. Got a lot of grease in here. We're going to take care of cleaning that up. But what you want to do right now is take a picture so that you know the orientations of these before you start pulling a lot of parts. Sometimes this one can just come right up and off. There is a beak on the back of this lever, so you have to be careful when you're taking that off. You don't want to break that. Do the same thing here, wipe the pieces down. Now you can put all your pieces in a tray and you can do the cleaning uh, at a later time. I just prefer, as I'm taking them off, if I can clean up those exterior pieces, it is a little bit easier. There is a Teflon ring that goes underneath the lever, and then the rest of that is just grease. We're going to take the ramp, or the guide for that lever off now. These have two little metal ferrules on them, and I I'm going to believe that they're two different size screws, so you need to pay attention here. This is your... Well, that's pretty much stuck in there, isn't it? All right, well, that'll probably fall out in a moment. You have a short one in the middle. And then I believe the next one is going to go all the way through. Well, that fooled me. It's not going all the way through. On the 30s and the 50s, there's, there's, that's the little ferrule I was talking about. Okay, the ramp is off. You have two long and a short. The short is in the middle. And these should be ferrules. These should come off. And that's what it was. They pull out. And I couldn't get them pulled out on the one side uh, because the ramp was blocking it. Okay, they're going to go into another corner of my parts tray. We'll clean the ramp. And notice on the ramp that when you go to reinstall, one side of this has a uh, tapered front right here. It's uh, kind of got a bevel to it. When you go to install, the taper faces out. Put that aside, and we're ready to open this reel up now. So we have a couple of side plate screws. We have four. Take the pictures. It's easy to uh, get confused as you go to reinstall. So we have one up top holding the harness lug. We have basically a northeast-southwest orientation to these. When you do the removal of the screws, please make sure that you use a screwdriver that matches the head of the screw. It's too easy on some of these older wheels to get yourself in trouble by using an undersized blade and then butterflying or not having the leverage to remove those screws. I'm doing the same thing with these that I did with the other. I'm taking them out, but I'm putting them close together and I'm comparing them as, uh, as I remove them. Right now, the two of those are the same size, so I'm guessing the other two will be the same size as well. But you never know, real manufacturers do some funny things. Sometimes they need internal clearance or something, they'll put a shorter screw in. Sometimes with like the 30W reel that I just worked on, uh, they used one of these screws as a cross post screw, it was a longer screw. So it always helps to pay attention. Don't assume too much anything going on here. This is the last screw now, so the plate should move out after this one is removed. Okay, all four of those screws are the same. We're good there. Now we should be able to remove the side plate. And, uh, well, it, they were right. This needs a good cleaning. So I'll take care of that. That's the harness lug. And generally, I recommend that you remove line when you're servicing the reel. Take care of the line. 
Uh, I don't know, maybe this fella put the line on recently. So I'm just going to rewire, rewrap. I've got a, uh, I'm gonna cut this here. I've got it doubled up for a, uh, a liter here and it's just kind of tangled up in there. And I'm gonna put a rubber band on this so that the line doesn't move much. Now this line looks like it's been here a while because I'm seeing the salt. I gotta get back to where the leader was tied. I'm seeing salt on here that usually says it's been there a while. And you should flush these reels, as I mentioned, on a regular basis. Like every time you're coming in from the trip. Now I know that's it's hard to do sometimes. But uh, the preventive maintenance goes a long way in terms of preventing uh, issues later on. All right, so we've got the spool here. I'm not sure I would think that this would be. Removable. Okay, we've got a mess here. So let's go to the gear side and we'll do that first. Pull out the main gear. Notice your positioning on that anti-reverse. Your bearing came out and uh, we've just got a lot of old grease in here now. So I'm going to use the penetrating oil. I'll use WD-40 to clean that up. Let's put a little bit on that bearing too because that's got that same shellac grease. And then I'm just going to use a cotton swab for the most part to do the cleanup. Well, while I'm doing that, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, uh, if you want to leave that question in the comment section of this reel, it doesn't have to be a question about this particular reel, uh, but if you leave that question, I will try to answer that question for you. Well, this, uh, this grease cooperated pretty well. Use a paper towel to clean that further. And uh, oh, that's that's all good. All right, nothing. Some fresh grease won't hold for you. The uh, the bearing sits in a uh, in a carrier. That carrier is the adjuster ramp for the reel. Just gonna get the old greases off of this. And then I'm going to test the bearing, make sure that that works. It's working fine. I'm going to oil the bearing. It's a shielded bearing. It's not a sealed bearing. And then that bearing can go back into the carrier here. If you wanted to or needed to remove the carrier, you have a clamp here that's doing that. Most of the time you don't need to remove the, the carrier. We'll do the same thing on the outside here. I'm just going to grab that penetrating oil. There's been some grease that's kind of accumulated along the track. And I'm just going to use the flat blade of a screwdriver to clear up the old stuff there. So, so much of what you do in, in real service is essentially just trying to make sure that you clean, inspect, get the old greases out, re-lube. And that's what we're doing here. Okay, that, that's in good condition. Let's go over to the main gear. Now this one must have been greased at some point, but it's totally devoid of grease right now. That's probably why all the grease was hanging behind it. Grab a hard brush and pull through the teeth of that main gear. Inspect the teeth and make sure that they're all clean and uniform. They're not chipped or cracked. And then you can re-loop. I'm going to use a fishing reel grease. I'll use pen precision reel grease for that. And we'll 
just uh, take care of putting a nice coat of grease on there. You don't have to overload. The overload is just going to get spun off with centrifugal force. But since this one hasn't seen grease in a while, we're going to make sure that we do that right. Okay. You want to reinstall the main gear. And as you come down, you want to take a, something to reach that anti-reverse dog and push that down. So that it will work its way in. When you've pushed it down, just rotate it to make sure that it's working, which it's doing fine. We can set that assembly off to the side. Once you've set that assembly aside, let's do the cleaning on the back end of this. The same thing happened here. Just a lot of old grease. And again, the penetrating oil is not used for anything other than to be that grease buster. Clean that up nicely, and we'll just do the same thing here. I'm going to throw some oil onto that assembly. We'll let that sit, and we'll go to the spool, which is where the business end of this is all about. The spool has four screws. We want to remove those. That's holding on the pressure plate and the drag assembly. There's four of them, should be the same screws. Again, I'm going to lay them on my desk to make sure that they're all the same size. Okay. Plate assembly comes off. This is your pressure plate for your, your drag, and it has your drag washer on it. We have a spring. This is a good place to tell you to take pictures. And now we want to pull the rest of the assembly out. I'm pushing that forward because there's a bearing under here that you need to work. And do the same thing. We're going to clean this side. We're going to oil the bearing. On here we have tension washers. They're a very dirty axle shaft. We'll take care of that. Do the same thing again. We're going to grab a paper towel. And uh, I use all kinds of penetrating oils. It doesn't matter to me the brand. I, I guess the, the market leader is WD-40. Sometimes everybody calls penetrating oil WD-40. BD40 branding folks probably don't like that, but and then we have four of these, and they're not flat washers, they're bell washers or tension washers. Let me get the old greases off of those. And the way these came off the reel was face to face. These could be adjusted to adjust the tension of the spool and the lever drag. All right, we've cleaned them. I'm going to put them back the way they came on. First one, the outside rim faces up on the bevel and then down, you reverse it. Then you reverse it again. And then one more time reverse. So you have a space in the middle of these is how this was initially set up. There is some mold grease that I didn't get there, so let's push that back. Take that brush and clean that out again. That's particularly stubborn that grease, so I'm going to take a, a little pick and just pull through it on that. Get the old grease out of those tracks. You can see all that old grease that's accumulated in there. You just need patience in cleaning it, but you want to make sure it's clean. Don't skip these steps. I'm going to 
penetrating oil. I'm going to push those washers back a minute and pull through that. And now you can see we got a nice clean piece there. All right. I like to put a little bit of grease onto the axle shaft itself. There's an inner race of the bearings that's going to be uh, lubricated by this. Let's go ahead and put that on. Remember, we oiled that bearing already. There's a bearing in the back side as well. We didn't oil that one, so take a moment to oil that. We can push the whole assembly through at this point. And now this thing should spin. Yeah, it wasn't spinning before because of all the dried grease. It wasn't spinning well. Now it's spinning nice and easily. And again, that's part of what this is all about when you start to do the, the service on it. All right, while I was wiping up some of the old grease, and I guess what happened was I wiped off some of the oil on the bearing. So let's just put that on. If you didn't take a picture and you're watching this because you didn't know what happened there, there is a spring that goes on next. Then our plate assembly. Now this dragger is in good condition. If you can see the cross hatching and you don't see evidence of wear, then your, your drag washer is fine. Sometimes you'll see clogged channels, which will be dried grease. Take a soft brush and just pull through so that you can see those cross hatches. You don't need to grease this. Pressure plate goes on next. Then we can put the cover on. I'm just going to wipe down the old grease on the cover. The back of the cover is the click ratchet or bait alarm. Let's line these up now. And we can go put the four screws back in. So there's, these are not terribly difficult to work on. Some people think that because they're not familiar with them, they don't want to take that jump into the water, if you will. That, that's okay. You need to be comfortable with what it is that you're doing, but sometimes you can expand your comfort zone, and maybe that's the, the outcome of these channels on YouTube, like this one. The goal here is to teach you how to do it yourself. Teach you a little bit about the, the reels, how they come together, how they were made, and how to service them. And uh, I hope you're learning from them. Two more. Last one. And then I'm just noticing there's a little bit of, looks like a little bit of grease where the bearing is going to ride. Let me take that pick again and just run it through there. Yeah, there's a little bit of grease there. So the bearing on the back case is going to fit in this slot here. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And now we can just go ahead and reinstall the side plate. And we can finish this up. Again, we've cleaned the gear. We've taken care of all the old grease on the side plate. We've oiled the bearing in the back. We did not remove the adjuster uh, mechanically. It's doing fine. We don't need to do anything with that. And uh, right now, you just want to merge them. And we need to line up the screws. we can set the first screw. This is probably where it was important to see what screws belong where. All four of them are the same. I'm going to put one in the bottom here because we know that that's not one of the ones involved in the, uh, the lever. And I want to just take the pressure off. Next one I want to do, I want to take the harness lug line that up and place that one in. And before we go much further, make sure that the that the uh, spool is turning freely. It's not turning freely. You didn't mesh the gears right, and there's no sense putting anything more on there uh, than having to disassemble the reel to 
or fix an earlier issue. Screw on this side. Screw on the other side. Take your time. You don't get points for finishing first. Just be patient. There's a lot of work that goes into these reels, but there's a lot of rewards from finishing the reel. So just take your time to do it properly. Right, we have those little collar pieces. They go next. One on each side. Make sure that they press down all the way. The screws will pull them in if you don't have them down all the way. All right. Now remember what we said. There's a bevel side on this. That's this one for the screw. You can go ahead and center this up. The screws kind of hold it in place, so I like to do it. I do two of those. Now I have the small screw goes behind the bevel there, a small ferrule rather. All right, all the screws are set. Let's go ahead and put them in. So the International Series was really quite a a change for Penn. It happened in 1967, the first introduction of these gold series reels. Before that, they were dependent on their big Penn senators. They didn't have these, uh, these lever drag reels. And uh, well, they proved quite successful. It really helped Penn continue to make a name for itself in the salt water big game market. Remember what we said about that plastic washer that goes behind the lever drag arm? There's a little groove in there. It was filled with grease. That's why we took that piece out. Now you want to match or mesh this piece. I don't think my owner will get upset if I try to get this off here. I'm just going to use the dull side of the, the blade here. Kind of do the scraping on that. Looks like it nicked something that was fresh paint. Or maybe it wasn't fresh paint. You just stick the paint and grabbed it. All right, better. All right, to put this on then, we know we left it in free spool, so we're over here somewhere. You do have a knob here that you probably have to work around. Hook the beak first. Get that over the lever. And then you can push in and merge it with the two studs that's on the side reel. Now, you got to... Uh, on that adjuster panel. You had a hard time seeing that the first time because, well, it was covered with grease. All right, this one is kind of fun. Hopefully, I didn't disturb that, so we should be able to just put it back on, but you need a visual here. The slot on this, like a screwdriver, belongs in a slot there. So we're going to go over, and you're going to take that visual. Yeah, not far off. There we go. And if it's giving you any trouble, just do the visual, take a look, peek from behind, and uh, eventually you will get that lined up properly. Okay, three screws here. And we're coming towards the end of this one. Those of you used to watching, thanks for your continued support. And if you're watching and you haven't subscribed yet, I would ask you again to subscribe because, well, this is kind of what most of the real repair videos look like. I do try to cover some other topics in the channel, but most of it centers around the, the fishing reels themselves and how to repair them. So if you're thinking of a hobby, it's a great hobby. The idea behind Second Chance is to keep the reels fishing, give them a second chance. A lot of times uh, reels get discarded or Put on the back shelf or something because they're not uh, uh, they've broken this is one way to help get them off the shelf and onto the water all right the handle goes next the handle tie down screws follows 
Just tighten that down, and when you tighten it down, you need a scallop to align with that set screw hole. I think we got that. And the set screw is the last part in the box, so we know that we put the parts that we took off back. Do we know that we put them in the right position or not? I don't know. I think we did. All right, we can give it a ride now, see how we did. Whenever you're adjusting a lever drive wheel, make sure you're in free spool when you're doing it. Don't attempt to tighten or loosen your preset while this is, is in a different position. Spin the reel, it spins beautifully. Bring it up to first strike. Handle's moving, so that means that we've engaged the drag. Second strike, and you should have a full press down at that point. You should be able to put pressure on the spool and not be able to turn the handle. That's what we're doing there. So that's it, that's your pen. Pen Reels International 2 LT, and uh, it's been taken apart, it's been cleaned, it's been inspected, it's been re-lubricated, reassembled, it's ready to go fishing again. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like the video. If you want to see more, please subscribe. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do to keep us safe. I really do appreciate all of your efforts. To everyone, learn the art of reel repair. Enjoy uh, servicing your reels. Keep them clean at a minimum. If you need somebody else to work on your reels, that's fine. But keep them clean. We saw that this one uh, had accumulated a lot of film and some dried creases and salts. And we still see evidence of salt here. Hose your reels down when you're done, particularly if you're in a saltwater environment. Use fresh water. If you don't have a hose, take the reel off and put it in a bucket or a pail of water or a coffee can full of water or anything. Just uh, use that to dissolve the dirt and that that may have accumulated over your day's trip. I hope that's been helpful. This is Dennis with Second Chance Cycle. Have a great day.